We're with Nick Karakoudis at Be Thankful Farm, and uh, yours truly is behind the video today because of social distancing. Mm. I set up the chairs at our normal pattern, and he says to me, we got a social distance, and you're right, and we're far enough away so we don't have to wear masks. So how's it going today, Nick? Everything's everything's good here. It's been a really busy week the past week. Uh -huh. Wes, oh yeah, lots of planting, lot, non-stop irrigation. It's so dry, we're now in an official drought. It's um, June 1st, by the way. Yeah, it's June 1st, um, and June came in, it was in the 30s uh -huh. last night, and um, so it has remained cool. But a lot of crops are making a lot of um, great development, and we just keep taking care of everything. Keep the weeds mm -hmm. down. The weeds are coming on strong, but we've beaten them back, um, my workers and I. And we just keep planting at this point, keep uh -huh. taking care of everything, and take on the next disaster that's coming out, the next insect, the next weed, and just keep you know defeating them and just keep planting. And pretty soon we're gonna have some real good stuff. Um, not this coming week, so it's June first, so. We won't be have we won't be having or have had the harvest this first week of June, but it sure looks like the second week in June, which is the average. Sometimes uh -huh. we're the first, sometimes we're the third week. Last year we were the third week in June. Second week is kind of average. Um, second weekend. So that's what I expect now. And then we'll see what we have the other time. We'll have some stuff that'll be good. Great, great. So let's have a look. Let's take a look around. That's you. Thank you, sir. All right, here's the first field. And um, the lettuce plants are really looking pretty. No, nope. tempted to eat it right now. But this is where they're gonna really put some mass on and make a lot of product so that we can harvest it over a period of time. And, um, but what, what I did want you to see here is that, the, what, what, uh, I'll explain quickly what, how we harvest these, is we do, with these lettuce plants, we do the cut and come again. So what we're gonna be doing is they hit the proper size, we'll come through and we harvest the out, outer leaves and let the inner part of the plant continue to grow and refill the bed. So with proper mm -hmm. fertilization, watering, and weeding, you can see how clean these beds are. This mm -hmm. is called weeding right here. It's a pile right there that my um, workers, my assistants did for me today. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. The bed looks fantastic. All right, here's some radishes are looking good. They won't be ready this weekend, but they'll be ready next weekend. Yeah, you get a little bit of a root in there, but not much. And uh, they've survived the flea beetles. I think the spinach has come up. Mm -hmm. The first spinach bed. That's a tough one, that's carrots. There's a, that's a weed battle still going on. And here though, they did a fantastic job. You've got some really nice beets here. It's a nice bed. You've got some good filling the whole way down. And um, there's two varieties. We've got the, um, we've got a, a standard purple one and I got a nice golden beet. Which mm -hmm. is, it's real golden all the way through. Very pretty. So that, those beds look good. And uh, these, these, um, these are beans. This is the Arur. There's, there's multiple bean beds through the season. This is the first bean bed, and it came in really nice. It, it filled in nice. Cutworm damage was minimal. Here's some here. Some cutworm showed up, took three in a row, but then that was the end of him, and he doesn't seem to have done any more damage. Mm -hmm. And um, but we purposefully overseed anyway. Some of these plants are going to be removed anyway. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the cutworms do some thinning. It would have been nice if he had spread out his thinning, though. Yeah, can you transplant some of them that you're... Uh... You can sometimes try to move them around, but they don't like to be moved. Mm -hmm. and, and the kale, this is the new kale bed. Looks good. And some Swiss chard up there is looking pretty good, too. And we're working with... We, this is the first half of the celery. Celery is a very, very, um, very fussy crop. And it, it, it's to get a really, a really nice soft one and crispy one at the same time, to get real quality celery, um, you have to maintain an even moisture, soil mm -hmm. and moisture. So that's what the straw does here. That's why they get the special straw. And you have to keep them wet, but not too wet, but not too dry to get a really quality celery. A quality celery is really an amazing thing for soups and, and even it's just really great in your salads. So that's the first half and the next part of the bed will be the second half. So we, we can stagger that harvest of celery along the way for you. This bed, this field is looking really nice. See here, here what they do between the rows here, Wes. What we do is we put this cardboard down, uh -huh. put the wood chips on, and uh -huh. that keeps down any intruding weeds between the rows. Also maintains soil moisture, of course, too. So it's a double purpose. And then eventually it all breaks down, like you see over here. 
this is last year's. It breaks down and you can till it back into the soil. Mm -hmm. so it's also a great reuse of the cardboard. Keeps the cardboard out of the waste stream. And so it's wood on top of wood, because the cardboard is wood. So eventually all it goes right back into the field. You should send Jeff Bezos a thank you letter. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> For the cardboard. <laughs> All right. Now, I like doing the film because it gives actually gives I can see it through a different eye myself because I'm always mm -hmm. like micromanaging. Mm -hmm. So walking around with you West gives me a chance to kind of see the whole picture. Does that make any sense? This gate really is only to keep my own dogs out of here. Because any kind of animal could get over this. This is to keep my dogs from coming in here and rummaging around through the crops. Trying to heat it up here and maintain soil moisture. We have irrigation tubes under here. Mm -hmm. Then we go over and we got a break and we've got the um, straw to cool it off a little bit for the strawberries. Oh. So you get a strawberry bed in there. And there's a first year for these strawberries. And mm -hmm. you can see all these flowers. And you can see the tiny little green fruit that are already starting. Nice. And it's a big, long row. And then beyond that, there's another row in there that had yet to be planted, but we're going to plant that one with another crop. And then beyond that, you can see... What's going to go in there? I the... think I'm going to probably uh, put... Um, what am I going to put in there? I think summer squash. Uh. We're going to put some... We have another spot for it, I believe. But that's going to be summer squash there. This whole row is 100 feet. Oh, what I missed here, too, by the way, besides the corn. See, there's another empty row in there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put musk melons. Oh, yeah, you were saying last time. Yeah. Is it uh, ground 70 degrees yet? That, uh, it's, well, th this this didn't help, this cold spell we just mm -hmm. had, but mm -hmm. it's warmed up again by the end of the week. So it's getting time. I think I can start throwing these seed in now, this, this, um, the squashes and the um, melons. I like to hold on. <coughs> um, and uh, June 1st, and the um, onion plants, they were pretty shaky there for a while, sitting there in the cold, and it didn't even look that good coming when they were shipped here. But they're looking a lot better. They're perking up and they like their environment. We've kept them clean. And we've got some um, greens growing between the rows here, even. And over here on the white, the white beds here, we got our brassicas again. They look a lot better. They, they've survived their most recent attack from the flea beetles. And um, we brought them through that. And they're getting bigger. And you can see that purple cabbage is looking pretty. And over here, the um, the Snow peas, um, climb the trellis. That's always fun. And they are 60 days to maturity, and I think we put them in about three weeks ago. So I'm going to say 20, 39 days from now, you'll have um, some nice Oregon giants. Yeah, so field two's looking good. Because I have to keep all the calculations of days to maturity to know when to put the stuff in, to plant it, when you're going to harvest it, so you can have harvest through the whole season. Mm -hmm. I spent a large amount of days lately doing exactly this, putting water on plants. I do a lot of farming, it's putting water on plants, on everything. It's been so dry. And um, we looked at the tunnel, and when tomorrow we'll put the tomato plants out, and here they are, this is where they've been living, on these pallets underneath, get to, to the right size, and getting some shade during the hottest part of the day, Underneath this big maple tree. They're here for a purpose. So they get sun in the morning, then they're in the shade, and then they get sun in the evening while they're waiting. And they the meantime, can keep them growing. And um, they've been fertilized, and they look good. And, um, all right, so I'm going to keep them wet, though. Always take the lower leaves off the tomato plants. It helps ear movement, helps direct energy upward on the plant, and it removes the diseases almost always begin at the bottom. So take those leaves off. Tomato plants are so vigorous that they're going to make a big top anyway. So you have nothing to lose by removing those lower leaves. And now it also makes it easier to get into a water room. You notice I'm not watering from the top. So I don't want the leaves to get wet. Wet leaves, because uh, the fungus wants moisture. Mm -hmm. For the fungus spore to germinate. It's like a little seed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually yeah, clone, yeah. right? And if it lands on a wet leaf, it's going to grow. It's going to make a little, you know, um, reproductive um, spore, a 
it'll make more and it's not spreading all over the place. So um, that's the advantage of growing tomatoes inside the high top. That's the number one advantage. It's, I think it's even more than the heat. They love the heat, of course, in there, and they explode because of the, the temperature. But there's never any disease, and I don't have to spray them with mm -hmm. any kind of a spray, not even like an organic spray. They're spray free. And um, that's only because the leaves never get wet. Those are more peppers you just watered? These are more peppers. Oh, this is an interesting pepper. This is the um, Jupiter pepper, which is a giant pepper. And even the plants are giant. Yeah, this is the Jupiter. See how big they are already? So it gets big. And well, most of our other tomato, uh, other pepper plants, which are already in, we harvest them when they're small. And um, so that way that the plant keeps making more fruit. So you can mm. keep harvesting, keep harvesting off of them. If you take the fruit off the pepper plant, it'll make more. But we're not going to do that with these. We're going to let these go right to maturity and mature their fruit. And because what you end up with is a big, beautiful red pepper. Mm -hmm. but, but you have to leave it on right till maturity. So they won't make a lot, but what they make will be special. The big giant red pepper, if we can get them grow. So we're going to take a shot with that. See, we've got the fields are filled with broccoli, but there's even more. Because these are younger plants. So we're staggering the planting. These guys are ready to go in too now. The second thing, these are some really pretty uh, cabbages. Late cabbage, we call this. The early cabbage you're going to feel about, although these guys are really beautiful. They want to go in. Tomatoes. See how different this tomato looks, Wes? Mm hmm. Looking at the leaves. This is an old heirloom. You can tell the difference with the leaf shape on this particular variety. And there's another. What's that one you're watering there? That was the um, brandy wine. That's the brandy wine. No, but this one in comparison, they were just about to water. That one what over is there. This? Yes. Yeah, that is. Those are those are cherry tomatoes. Uh huh. Yeah, the leaves are small. Actually, a little bit smaller sometimes, but that's a cherry tomato. Right. Well, so I'm just comparing them. Look at the difference between the uh, the leaf, the brandy wine, and the cherry. Can, well, look, see, it's like, almost like a potato shape, mm -hmm. like a potato leaf. See, it's like a heart. Mm -hmm. Not as much low, not as sharply defined leaf edge. Look on this one. See the sharply defined leaf edges? More serrated. Serrated, serrated. Lobular. See? A bit different. It's an mm -hmm. old variety. Very old variety. So the plant breeders have not done, get, got at it much. And um, so it doesn't have very good disease resistance. Very hard to grow brandywine out in your backyard. You're better off, right? If you want success, I think this is where you're going, is to is to grow something um, that the plant breeders have bred in, some disease resistance, like, you know, Better Boy, those type mm. of varieties, those hybrids. And you can specifically look for disease resistance. They're trying to breed in disease resistance. So home garden, I highly recommend that. Look for disease resistant varieties. See, what else do we have here for the tomatoes? <clears throat> Let's see if I can name all the varieties. All right, these, are, these will be planted tomorrow too, but um, these are not gonna be going into the tunnel. Um, but these are Amish paste tomatoes. So we'll be growing these for you. This is a determinate variety where it'll produce all of its fruit within a narrow window within a few weeks. So we'll let you know when they're coming in, we'll say, here's your tomato um, sauce making weeks. So the rest of the varieties, which we have the purple Cherokees, and the um, and the brandy wines, those heirlooms you can eat those raw and eat those in your salads and enjoy them. They're, they're fun mm. to make a sauce too, make a special sauce. But we want to make sure we give you plenty of plenty of um, other sauce tomatoes too. The Amish paste tomato was a very good tomato. It's a Roma type, um, not a lot of fluid inside of it, mostly flesh. That's why it's a, a sauce tomato. Um, it is a, an heirloom variety. Yeah, this, this tomato right here, this tomato plant, these are the star of the show. These are the purple Cherokees, and this is the best tomato anywhere. It doesn't have disease resistance, but we grow them inside, so that's okay. They're in really great shape. They love it in the tunnel, and they make the best tomato. It's a big, 
beautiful purple tomato with a thin skin with a remarkable subtle flavor and it's just uh, you know one of a kind one of a kind tomato it's the best one excellent but people eat it they, everyone agrees that was great the farm is really looking uh, nice a lot of plants have come up since last week yeah yeah. So again, with our social distancing from behind the camera instead of in front, this week we got a question about tomatoes. And the question is, how do you choose which tomatoes you grow? That's a good which question. Which varieties? Yeah, of that's tomatoes? a good question. Um, because I'm growing in the high tunnel, I can, be, I can choose some varieties that homeowners can't choose. Um, varieties that don't have good disease resistance because the leaves stay dry so I can grow the tomatoes, the old heirloom types mm -hmm. um, that are very susceptible to disease. And um, I can grow them and get these varieties that are usually more um, a tasty, the tastier. Um, basically, it's flavor. I'm going for flavor. And I found two varieties that I think are the best, which is the brandy wines and the um, purple Cherokees. And those are the two best, most flavorful tomatoes. They're heirloom varieties, means they're very old varieties. Um, means they haven't been like improved by the plant breeders. Plant breeders have the ability to breed in disease resistance. So you get like a best boy or a better boy. Plant breeders have, have improved the varieties and, um, so that they can like, the leaves can stay on the plant. They're much uh -huh. more resistant to diseases. But oftentimes you, the fruit is not as good. The fruit is lacking uh -huh. in comparison. I choose these because I grow them inside the tunnel west so they don't get the diseases. So that's the advantage. It's taking the full advantage of having that tunnel is tomatoes, the top crop. That's why they get that tunnel every year. That's, uh -huh. that's their spot. They get the penthouse. Does that also extend their season? Is that or extend the, your season for growing tomatoes? Oh, yeah. That goes right. We'll be having the harvest in tomatoes in October. Well into October, ripe tomatoes. Yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I choose. And um, um, this year I've added because I wanted to add more, so I'm adding the paste tomatoes, too. Uh -huh. Let's see if we can get those. But that's going to be a challenge, because they're going to be outdoor. So I'm not sure how that's going to go. We'll see how that goes. So your outdoor tomatoes, did you say they were aromas? They're aroma type. Uh-huh. Yeah. And they're... Um... So it's made for sauce. They're shaped like, you know, they're about uh -huh. that big, yay big. And they don't, don't have too much fluid in them, so they're nice for boiling down, breaking them down to make a sauce. Mm, um, my fave. Yeah, but, um, but you know, growing them outdoors, I'll be facing the same, um, all the same challenges that homeowners have when you're trying to grow your tomatoes outside. So we'll see how that goes. It'll be interesting to watch. It'll be interesting to watch, see the comparisons. But it was worth doing because we're very confident of the tomatoes coming out of the tunnel. Great. They'll be fine. Great. Well, thanks a lot, Nick. I'll see you next week. Thank you, Wes. Bye. Bye.